Hey everyone, welcome to the Presence Pioneers podcast. I'm your host, Matthew Lilly. So glad you decided to join us today on episode number six. Our podcast exists to equip leaders and everyday Christians to host the presence of God. We believe God's presence changes everything. He's changing my life. He's changing your life. We love God. We love His presence. Thank you for joining us today. If you're new, please subscribe if you have not done that yet so you can stay connected with us for future episodes. We have all of our old episodes up at our website, podcast.presencepioneers.org. We also have the downloadable PDF notes that I use to teach from that you can download there and the links in the show notes and all of that good stuff. You can subscribe via email. You can connect with us on YouTube, iTunes, all the different ways you might get podcasts and stay connected with us. We'd love for you to do that. We'd love for you to leave comments and like and uh, share on social media, leave an iTunes review. All that stuff is a huge blessing to us and it helps the podcast get out. So thank you so much for that. We'd love for you to consider making it a donation on the website as well, which would help us continue to do this podcast here. So, so excited about episode six. We're talking about this new era of the global prayer movement. So if you haven't seen the last couple episodes, it's worth going back and, and getting the context because God is doing something amazing. For the last 20 years, we've been in an unprecedented, historic move of the Spirit of God where He's drawing the church to pray and worship and surround ourselves around His presence like never before. He's calling His people back to Himself and there's 24-7 day and night worship and prayer exploding all over the earth. But we're, we're in this transition season now, tw about 20 years into what I call the global prayer movement, the modern day prayer movement. And, and there's this massive transition. And so I've been sharing about some of the trends prophetically, some of the voices and the leaders who are saying that we're entering a new era. We're in transition. This is a uh, is a new time. There's things that are changing. And so I, I share about that some in the previous episodes. I want to continue on that. And I want to share about an encounter I had with the Lord um, that really spoke to me at the end of 2018 as I was I was seeking God about this year because I knew that we were on the 20-year anniversary of many of the great 24-7 worship and prayer movements. And, uh, and I just was like, God, what are you saying in this season? It feels like there's transition. What are you saying? And so I was on this prayer retreat uh, at this Catholic retreat center outside of Durham, North Carolina, uh, just walking around and praying. And I went in the little chapel and I was seeking the Lord. And I said, God, what are you saying for this next season? And, uh, and I just heard so clearly. It was like an internal voice. I heard, my glory I will not give to another. And it was like lots of reverb just in my soul. And I kept hearing it. It was like it was echoing or reverberating inside of me. My glory I will not give to another. My glory I will not give to another. And the presence of God just came on me. I just began crying and uh, and just knew that God was speaking to me. And so I, it, it took me a minute to sort of recover from that. Um, but but as, as this is reverberating inside of me, I, I begin to, to hear God begin to unfold to me that He's wanting to do something new in the prayer movement. He's wanting to pour out new wine, a fresh outpouring of His Spirit, but it's going to require new wineskins. He's wanting to release new joy, new power, fresh sense of God's tangible presence as we worship and pray and spend time with Him. But He's wanting to do it through new wineskins. You can't put old wine uh, in new wineskins and uh, can't put new wine in old wineskins. And so uh, God began to show me that He's wanting to to have these new wineskins, which are the expression of our ministry. So if the, the wineskin is the form, the expression, the structure of our ministries. And he wants to pour out new wine, but we have to be open to the new thing he wants to do so that we can be ready to receive it. And these wineskins are going to have to be wineskins that give God all the glory. He said, my glory I will not give to another. So as, as God's giving me all this and I'm crying and I'm having this encounter, this moment with the Lord, I kind of come to eventually. And I know that it's a scripture, but I can't remember where exactly it is. And I look it up and it's Isaiah chapter 42. So I want to 
share a little bit out of Isaiah 42 as I've processed this encounter and, uh, and, and share some of the relevance of what I think God's speaking from this chapter for this season. So the verse that God spoke to me out of was verse 8. So I want to read Isaiah 42, 8 and 9. God says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. So there it is. You see it right there. He, he's saying, my glory I will not give to another. And then he starts speaking to me about new things. And that's literally the next verse in this passage here. He's saying, my glory I will not give to another. I will not let you have idols, carved images. You know, I, I'm going to be first. I'm going to do some new things. You've got to be ready. I'm going to tell you about them before they happen. And so God is is doing something new right now in this season that's really profound and it's really significant. So let's look at uh, Isaiah 42 and give some context to these verses and get a bigger picture of what God's doing. God is insisting on the centrality of Jesus. That's a quote from my friend David Bradshaw. He says, God is insisting on the centrality of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is insistent on Jesus having the glory. And that's what Isaiah 42 is all about. Let's look at, let's start back at the beginning, verse 1. It says, Behold, my servant whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights. This is a messianic prophecy of Jesus. It goes on to say, I've put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. He will not cry out, nor raise his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. He will not fail or be discouraged till he establish justice in the earth. Okay, so this is a prophecy of Jesus, and I just feel like this first word is so crucial. Behold. God is saying, behold. Behold Jesus. Shift your focus. Shift your attention. Behold Jesus. Behold the servant. Behold the one who was and is and is to come. Behold the Son of God. Behold the one who died on the cross. Set your attention. Set your focus. You're, you're distracted. It's time to behold Jesus again. So God is, is coming into the body of Christ, especially in America, and he's saying, I'm going to have glory. You've been building ministries. You've been building platforms. You've been building brands and logos and marketing and all these kinds of things. And he's saying, I'm going to have the glory here. My glory I will not give to another. There's no more gimmicks and marketing and branding. He's like, and, and I'm not saying that we can't ever put logos and brands on things, but, but he's saying, I want to be the brand. I want to be lifted above all of that. I want it all to point towards my glory and my name and having me be the message, me being the one that's talked about and loved and adored and seen that I would be the one that's beheld above everything else. So he's saying, behold Jesus, behold the one who's come to bring forth justice. When Jesus came onto the scene, John the Baptist said in John 1, 29, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Hebrews 12, 2 tells us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our, our faith. Consider him who endured hostility. So we consider, we fix our eyes, we behold. Um, in Revelation chapter 5, the elders said, Do not weep, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. I looked and behold. That's a word from the Lord right now as he's saying, behold. Uh, don't get distracted. Don't, be, don't look to the right, to the left. Lock in to Jesus Christ. This is not the time for many things. It's the time for one thing. In the midst of this transition, God spoke to Mike Bickle and the leaders at IHOP and the International House of Prayer in Kansas City and gave this word, reset. And so there's this resetting of our focus and our attention on Jesus, this cutting away of the distractions and uh, even the idolatry in our heart and all the noise and, and zeroing in on Jesus. Here's a quote from Mike Bickle in, in his open letter that he wrote 
to the prayer and prophetic movement last October. He says, I urge you not to miss the signals the Holy Spirit is giving the church in this hour. These are days of high transition. God is speaking, but his whisper demands revelation and unique focus. Unique focus in this season. Behold, he goes on to say, voluntarily choose to adjust your life's signal to noise ratio. Less noise, more focus. Behold, Jesus. The global prayer movement is entering into its next critical phase, going far beyond the theater of an event and into the Father's deep desire for the total supremacy of His Son to be known among the nations, for Jesus to be known, that He would not give His glory to another, that He would be, that everyone would behold Him and see Him and love Him. Psalm 27, 4 That famous quote of David, one thing I ask, one thing I seek. God's inviting us back to that one thing where we behold Jesus, where we where we love him, where we focus on his presence and we behold his beauty and we hear his voice. That same language, that one thing language is used in the story of Mary and Martha, where Jesus said, Martha, you're worried about many things, but one thing is needed and Mary has chosen the better part. And so we need to be like Mary in this season where we choose the one thing, we choose the better part, where we focus in our attention on Jesus and we not get distracted. God's speaking this through Isaiah 42. He's speaking this through the story of Mary and Martha in this season. It's time to behold, not give our glory to anything else, not not carved images, not man-made stuff, not the superficial stuff, not all the traditions and the things we've built and we've made but to give our focus and our attention and our worship to Jesus and only Jesus. So what's happening in Isaiah 42 here? Jesus is presented. It's a prophecy of Jesus coming, his purpose to bring justice to the Gentiles. And then that's verses 1 through 7. Verses 8 says, I, I, uh, the, I the Lord, I'm the Lord, that is my name, my glory I will not give to another. So there's a reorientation around the presence of Jesus and the glory of God. And then what happens after those verses, verses 10 through 11, is a global worship movement. It says, sing to the Lord his praise from the ends of the earth, you who go down to the sea and all that's in it. And it lists out all these different places uh, where worship and a new song is rising all over the earth. This passage is about the global worship movement. And it's about Jesus being sunk to. He's presented. He's seen. The, the, the world is beholding him. And there's a response of worship where all over the world there's a new song that erupts. There's a global worship and prayer movement. This is what it's all about. In verse 13, God responds to our response. So Jesus is beheld. There's a response from the church of worship. And then Jesus responds to our response. And it says in verse 13, The Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud, and he will prevail against his enemies. That's the power of worship. God responds and releases his presence and his power on the earth. This is amazing. So this is us right now, Isaiah 42 that God is raising up a a worship movement and prayer movement all over the world. There's 20,000 groups that are praying 24-7. There's hundreds and hundreds of furnaces of worship and prayer. There's thousands of missionaries who are doing worship and prayer as their main ministry. In in America, David's Tent D.C. has been going 24-7 for three years. With our burn movement, we've got 75 furnaces all over the U.S., hundreds all over the world. This is happening right before our eyes. But God is saying, go back. This is happening. Verses 10 through 12 are happening. But go back to verse 8 and make sure that our hearts are pure. My glory I will not give to another. Make sure this is really about me. Make sure you're focused. Make sure your hearts are clean from idolatry and that that you're not trying to build your ministry and build your kingdom and, and make this about you. Make sure this is really about me, about my glory, because I'm insisting on it. I want to release a fresh wave and a fresh outpouring of my spirit on this, but it's going to happen uh, on those that have clean hands and pure hearts. 
We're going to be able to see my glory and be a part of what I'm doing. And so God's just, just insisting, again, that he receive glory, that we be focused because he loves us, because he wants to move through us. He loves the world, and he wants to bring revival and awakening and transformation to the earth. And so he's insisting that our hearts be pure and clean and that, uh, that he receive the glory in this because he's the one the world needs. So God's spoken so clearly to me about this in this season that he wants to have the glory. So I encourage you, go go study Isaiah 42, meditate on it. I believe it's a it's an important chapter for us in this season as we enter into this new era for the global worship and prayer movement. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for speaking to me about this. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Jesus. Help us and help everyone that watches and listens to this, to focus in this season, to cut aside the noise and the distraction, to fall in love with you, Jesus, to hear your voice, to zero in on you, and to love you above else. Help us to turn from our idolatry and repent of of any selfishness, of any self-promotion, of anything we've exalted above your name in our hearts and in our lives. Forgive us, God. And we say today, Jesus, have your glory. All the glory, not to us, but to your name, be the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching, listening today to this episode. If you enjoyed it, please share this on social media. Email it to your friends. And again, make sure you subscribe if you haven't so you can stay connected with us. Our website is podcast.presencepioneers.org. You can find all the subscription links and connect with us and anything else you need right there. Thanks again. God bless.